our, <laughs> our last session, uh, our big panel, is ready to start. It is hosted by Mitch Kenner. Um, he's uh, CEO of Two Degrees Ventures, and um, he's known in the business as having the biggest Rolodex ever, though so Rolodex is pretty analog, so maybe we change that to like Outlook address list or something like that. And he has spent eight years with Jim Cameron's digital domain where he created the most significant visual and digital effects operation serving the production of television and advertising. And so Mitch, from now on, it's your stage. Thank you. <clears throat> so the, the arrival of the digital revolution is having a profound impact on all media and entertainment value chains. Perhaps the most visible change is happening with consumer behavior. Expectations of all media are changing literally every day. How do we consume it? Where do we consume it? What's the device? It's all in flux. And that's just the consumer. Managing all of this, maximizing the value of content that is being created is increasingly complicated as consumers gain control and the distribution platforms explode. Big films in the U.S. now open on 8,000 to 9,000 screens, almost a third of all of the screens in the U.S. Morgan Freeman released his latest film, 10 Items or Less, theatrically, but then made a deal with Intel and immediately made it available uh, for promotion. Um, it's actually the marriage of entertainment and consumer brands and platform. MSN has rewritten the online content model for brands and entertainment and how we're going to monetize content online. iTunes is shifting TV viewing radically, enabling consumers to download a whole season at once, which I've done many times. Netflix is moving to an online distribution model, and now Walmart moved in with a download portal last week using Walmart pricing. It's all about the big screen, the TV screen, the portal, or even mobile. I don't know. Film as a business requires a return on investment, profit to perpetuate. Wall Street and all the financial markets and all the investment communities want to make money at the end of the day. Online ad revenues are meant to grow to over a half a trillion dollars within the next 10 to 14 years, which will breeze by in no time if you believe in Moore's law. We need to look at film as all other content today, as platform agnostic. So Warren, can you give us a quick snapshot of the parallels today with the time period of when the launch of the DVD then? As now, there were more variables and equations. You helped solve it for everyone everywhere. Will that leadership come from now? Uh, sadly, um, and candidly, hopefully you'll accept this with modesty, the failure of a leader to emerge um, on the DVD side is one of the causes of the format battle. But on a broader sense, I think that Bob Iger, uh, the new chairman of the Disney Company, um, on his own, and I would suspect partially motivated by Steve Jobs' um, equity interest in Disney, has proven to be the most aggressive risk-taker in challenging the conventional distribution models. Um, and I, I think Disney might just very well be the leader in this space. Quite possibly, and, and Michael didn't do such a bad job himself. Um, what, what I'd like to know more about was now, now we're looking at DVD as a competitive platform. Okay, we're seeing two, di two different uh, DVD platforms in existence. First of all, we don't know whether one will win or, w or the other will win, and we're also seeing a degradation of the market in DVD at this point. Do you feel that that's going to move over to online? Uh there is an experiment occurring in Denver and Pittsburgh that is being organized by Comcast, the largest cable company in the United States. And they, are, uh, they have convinced five of the six major studios to make their feature films available simultaneously on the Comcast Video On Demand services in those communities on a rental model, $4 for 24 hours, simultaneous with the DVD release, which typically will sell for uh, prices between $15 and $20. Um, the test of whether the rental of a movie 
electronically, on demand, will cannibalize the sale of that same movie, which is being marketed for um, 15 to 20 dollars, will be a precursor to what happens on the internet with movies, subject to all the bandwidth problems that I described. Um, when DVD was launched, I had a commitment to evolve the business model from one in which consumers by and large rented to one in which consumers by and large purchased with the notion that at a mass market price, the um, price reduction of um, the DVD for sale would make up in volume what we lost in margin on the rental pricing. And sure enough, it did. Uh, so that not only were the sales volumes higher, but the profits higher, even though the prices were lower. Um, in this particular case of simultaneous video on demand, where the studio will derive about $2.80 as their royalty on a $4 uh, rental fee, the studios are going to have to sell at least five additional um, rentals to make up for one lost DVD sale. Their movement in this direction, however, has been generated by the fact that the revenue shares or splits between themselves and the rental dealers is such that 30% of every consumer dollar spent on renting a video at a retail store is going to the studio and 70% is going to the retailer. And in the Comcast experiments, those ratios are inverted. So on one hand, they will be getting higher fees for the rental segment, but they are placing a big gamble on jeopardizing the um, purchase market. Europe is a very different situation. Um, the EU had the foresight to implement the repeal of what we call in the States the first sale doctrine, which in simple terms means you can put out um, a movie for rental and purchase simultaneously, but prevent the rental dealers from buying the um, purchasable inventory so you can have one price one rental stream um, with product designated for rental only and a separate pricing structure for purchase so that at least in physical media you wouldn't be having the same situation of the 30-70s sharing. I think the online model will actually address this. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce David Kelly. He's a principal and partner in the European Co-Production Bureau in London. As a content creator, how do you feel about Warren's uh, comments? 